So do I share my screen now? Hey Erica, welcome. You don't share your screen yet. You're gonna share your screen in a second. It's great to have you here today. Um, we are rec recording the first episode of uh, my series, uh, Let's Show Off Your CICD, and I'm very glad that you are the first one uh, recording this with me. Uh, so can you introduce yourself a little bit and uh, yeah, tell a little bit about what you're actually doing today? Perfect. Yeah, thank you. First of all, uh, thank you, Johannes, uh, for this uh, invite and making me part of this great initiative. I'm pretty much sure that this initiative will go to different places and create create huge impact in the communities of builders as well as in the AWS ecosystem. Uh, to uh, introduce myself, I am a, a cloud uh, architect right now working with, uh, uh, working with a couple of Nordic customers where basically I help them uh, uh, create cloud native solutions where I basically uh, guide and coach their front end and other back end developers how to do uh, AWS related developments. Apart from that as well, I am part of uh, their infrastructure team where I set up the whole CI CD pipelines in the customer IT landscapes, as well as I uh, preach about how to adopt different sort of uh, infrastructure as a, as a development, as well as I perform uh, and evangelize uh, multiple AWS tools like CDK, uh, as well as uh, cloud formations as well. And apart from that also, I am a community builder uh, where I got selected into this AWS program back in August, 2022, where I'm where I'm constantly advocating about different solutions that are present in the AWS world uh, as well, and also try to be present uh, in the different meetups that is hap happening across the country and in Europe as well. And uh, lastly, uh, on the professional side, I am based out of Stockholm and have been living in Sweden for the last four and a half years. Cool, thanks a lot for sharing so much details about yourself. And uh, we know each other from the community day as well as from the builders. And it's a pleasure for me to, to get you on this series. So what are we going to talk about in this series? It's really showing what you do from a CICD perspective. Um, so um, I recently read one of your blog posts that was focused around CICD for an uh, SPA application. And I thought, come on, let's talk about that, right? And that's what we, why we're here. So I would propose, let's just directly go into it uh, and let's get started uh, with looking on your CICD pipeline and you can share some details around that as well. So if you would start sharing the screen now. Perfect. Uh, uh, just to start off the conversation around this uh, whole paradigm, uh, a, a few things uh, that was mainly responsible for driving the business value is irrespective of the technology stacks, what I have seen in my previous experiences with the customers that there needs to be an ironclad CI CD setup. And that is responsible for not only driving the business value stream of an organization, but also to constantly achieve a feedback loop of what the developers are, are trying to implement and how and what should be the future roadmap of the product that would look like. Now, uh, moving on to the CI-CD uh, pipeline, uh, all of us are quite clearly well versed with what is the continuous development and what, what is continuous deployment and integration looks like. In my use case, what I have been constantly doing with multiple customers on the cloud native uh, realm is to help them set up a proper iterative uh, feedback driven continuous integration and deployment setup. And this example is one such uh, one such component with a minimum viable products that you need to have into your pipeline. I mean, of course, there would be going ahead. There can be multiple things that can be added. But what I have tried to showcase here is the minimal minimalistic version of how the whole end to end workflows looks like. Okay, cool. So I would like to have a very brief um, overview about what the outcome is of what we're building, right? That means uh, you're already showing a diagram. Um, can you quickly show us what is this diagram? What is, is this the outcome of your CICD pipeline or what, what is this? 
perfect. Yeah, that's a really nice question, Johannes. So uh, there will be two aspects of this whole demonstration that I will be showing off. The first would be a single page application that will be deployed in AWS with the services like S3 and CloudFormation hosting and fronting the application. And the second part is a, a juxtaposition of multiple AWS services like code pipeline and code commit and code build, which will eventually uh, achieve the whole uh, flavor of CI/CD, which we which we need to look for. And uh, to give a, a brief uh, overview of what is a single page application, so frameworks like Angular, React, they they are useful for us to create a, a create and host websites in the uh, in the internet and with uh, and uh, with the integration of services like aws s3 we can basically create a single page uh, single page application which would basically transform the whole uh, pack of uh, uh, angular or react based framework into some simple files with containing index.html and some JS, js and some css so this is one such example that i that i will showcase in my upcoming uh, in in the upcoming slides and presentation and how the whole thing basically uh, drives up into the cloud is you can see in this uh, diagram that there is a s3 bucket and that contains the angular front end which we will create which i'll showcase how what are the commands that are used and how does basically it gets uploaded to the S3. And then it has some security uh, security guardrails around it because everybody can't just go inside and uh, try to upload any object or uh, access the website. So we have something called authorized, authenticated federations using AWS Cognito and IAM roles. And then this whole website has been has a distribution which is fronted by CloudFront mm -hmm. and it has an HTTP endpoint in top of that. Okay, is everything that we see here part of the infrastructure as code pieces that you have and that you are also deploying as part of your uh, CI/CD pipeline? Uh, yes, so a whole of this uh, setup is part of the CI/CD uh, develop uh, CI/CD uh, pipeline that will be developed. And when I run the actual CI/CD pipeline, we will get a cloud CloudFront distribution URL, which will basically have this whole app. So <laughs> I will go inside and then describe each of the component. Okay, let's go. So let's, I would say, let's skip the component details of the application. Let's directly go into the CI/CD pipeline for now, right? Because I want to really see how do you get your stuff to production? How do your changes then land at the end in your environment? Um, so maybe we can move over to your pipeline and uh, start looking at that. Yes, sure. So uh, so the, the, my next diagram is the whole end-to-end -end, uh, code commit, code pipeline that is used in the AWS world. So basically, the from the bird's eye view, this is what it will look like. So there will be a developer who basically will start pushing the code, and Can you then enlarge it a bit, little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep, perfect. Uh, so in this whole system, what what the developer will do is basically they will put the code into the AWS com code commit repository, and we can either use GitHub or any other thing, but the uh, but the concept remains same that based on the commit that happens into that repository, there will, there will be a trigger and that will eventually result in building the code and deploying them uh, in the S3 bucket with refreshing and invalid invalidating the existing cache. So that immediately when there is a change that happens on the backend side, the uh, the developers are used, are you, I mean, the front end is impacted on top of that and there can be, the changes can be seen. And apart from that, also the pipeline contains <coughs> this event-driven trigger-based notifications that I will also showcase here that there will be a Lambda and SNS function, which will give us uh, notifications through the email of what what, the, what is the existing, existing stage that is currently on or what sort of a commit ID has checked in so that it creates the auditability and the traceability on that. Cool. Now to, now to start off with that, let me basically... Uh, start uh, deploying the pipeline so that we don't have to wait once it gets deployed and once and while it gets the while it's getting deployed what i would do is i i would basically so that means I would, uh, looking at looking at your ski, screen you're you're using terraform to um, deploy your pipeline yes so basically uh, one of the reason that i have built this is using terraform we can use some other tools like cloud formation or cdk here 
but the advantage of uh, Terraform is, yeah, it's a multi-cloud one and it doesn't require any developer knowledge. So it's a de declarative way of uh, creating infrastructure as a code. Yes, that's perfect. And we are going to have, uh, in, as part of this series, other builders that uh, use CDK or direct the cloud formation and stuff like that. Uh, so Terraform is one option for infrastructure as code. Uh, are you also using that for your uh, application code later or is this only for the pipeline? Uh, it's it's used for the application code as well. So what I would like to showcase here is basically if you see on the left side of my screen, the whole application stake stack looks like two parts. So first is my application folder where it contains all the all the applications of the single page which which I had showcased previously, like how it is written or how it basically translates to. And and the important interesting part is as part of the pipeline. All of this, all of the application gets packaged into this folder called dist, and the contents of this dist folder is something which gets uploaded as a single page application into the S3 bucket, which is showcased here. Yep, cool. And now in the second part is the infrastructure part, and that is where the interesting thing comes in. So when I run ran this pipeline, I mean for the demos, for the demos perspective, and to ha save some time. What I have done is basically I have incorporated both the deployment first time of this application as a single page, as well as its deploy, as well as the whole pipeline is set. Cool. So what will this what will this code do is it will it will create an S3 bucket. It will basically host host all the applications that are there inside the disk folder, and then it will host a cloud front, and then then basically it will start off. A, uh, then it will have. Then it will give me a distribution endpoint URL, which we can uh, which we can basically sh uh, see in few minutes. Okay. So right can, now, can we look at the pipeline definition? So I would be really curious to see a pipeline definition in Terraform, as I have never worked with Terraform for defining CI/CD pipeline. Uh, sure. So uh, so what we have done here is like uh, based on the components that was showcased in the diagram. We try to divide that. So there is a code build part, code commit part, and the code pipeline part. So on the code pipeline part, we have we have basically th three components. The first component is the uh, I mean the main crux of this pipeline is there is a source, which is which is the code commit which I have sh showcased in the diagram earlier. Can I add one um, one, one thing? Uh, I know that you yeah. can you can see me right now because of technical challenges. So sorry yeah. for that. So. Uh, for for the uh, for the uh, listeners that have not worked with code build, code commit, and code pipeline before, uh, can you just quickly summarize one yeah. one sentence the, the the purpose of of each of these services? Perfect, sure. Uh, so I can actually go back to my screen to the AWS console screen so that it's much more easier to visualize. So uh, code commit and code pipeline and code deploy. If you can see on, I can probably increase the zoom a little bit. So they are part of the developers offering on the AWS side, and code commit is nothing but uh, our repositories which we have, which we will use. For example, our code commit repository is CI/CD demo SPA here. So it basically, it will contain all the repositories, and you can think this as as similar to GitHub or Bitbucket or uh, or any other uh, versioning tool. Then we have something called code build here. I will skip code artifact because that is not relevant so much for the demo, but you can think of this as a single storage solution for the artifacts that you build. Now, code build is something that you can basically think of as a Jenkins, which basically what, what it does is like it, it it has some commands that runs on the backend on a managed EC2 or on a managed uh, server, and it will build your code and will, it will create the artifact based on the instruction that we give. And you can see uh, in few seconds that there will, there, will be a pro there will be a project that gets created and what are the instructions that we have given it. And then there is code deploy. The code deploy is used basically for all the different concepts that are involved. So we can use like uh, rolling deployments. Uh, we can use one all at once deployment. And this code deploy is to targeted towards EC2 based deployment. So there are, there are have uh, use cases where we might use some EC2s or Lambdas or ECS, and we can use code deploy in conjunction with those services to deploy applications. And the code pipeline is nothing but our end-to-end uh, -end pipeline, which, which basically has the whole uh, 
full full proof visibility of when the post when the source code is fetched what sort when the code build is done when the deploy is happening you can have a whole traceability here so as you can see that i have already made our code deployment code running so there is a test pipeline which is already in progress and you can see the results in few minutes cool but uh, let's go back to the uh, uh, presentation right now on the code so uh, this is how the whole terraform looks like so if i go into into the pipeline so there are like three stages that are deployed so are created here the first is the source and this is what our source looks like and then we have the build stage the build stage and that is where the whole uh, components are getting built using mm -hmm. code build and this is where how is how is it is mentioned in the terraform terraform module and then the lastly we have something called deploy so in our use case we have also used the code build here because we don't need to deploy that into some ec2 or ecs services so what we just need to do here is just use the previous stage of uh, refreshing the caches in the s3 bucket and mm -hmm. then invalid invalidating the cloud front cloud front endpoint now as you can see like we have already uh, deployed it and there is a cloud front url uh, domain name that we have received now now once we go inside this we can see that uh, there is this ci cd which got deployed cool and now if i see in my pipeline so you can see that there is some pipeline uh, there is this pipeline which is which is happening so what it will do is basically it will create the same thing and it will push so it what it did was it fetched whatever my last commit was based on the repository <coughs> uh, based on the repository uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh reference that i gave them on the branch it it took out the uh it took out the code commit id and then it started uh, building that so um and, what i understand is that you you deployed this pipeline once and yeah. afterwards um the pipeline will automatically pick up any source change that you do is that correct Exa exactly so it will automatically start picking up all the source change that you need to do so going ahead you don't need to basically uh, do any more further addition to the code commit pipeline so this pipeline will be your source of truth going ahead for all mm -hmm. the deployments okay uh, and additionally on top of that what i would show here is like there is this uh, uh, subscription notification which i showcased in the earlier di earlier uh, diagram so you have an sns topic and you can actually get all the notifications on top of them Mm -hmm. So now, so now you will see like when I re-trigger the pipeline once, uh, you will uh, you will start receiving notifications on top of that. Okay, cool. So that means you're gonna get an email as well afterwards. Exactly. Uh, be so before we go there, can we just have another look on the Terraform code and uh, look at the definitions that you have in the build phase today? Um, so what what is being executed as part of your build today? Sure. Uh, so basically, from the DevOps side, what happens is like. Uh, we have we have uh, as mentioned we have basically segregated all the different stages, and then in the code commit side we basically uh, take the input or mm -hmm. initialize initialize the repositories on the uh, on the Terraform realm mm -hmm. using some key name called data, and then using in this code build we have basically two stages as 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 I showcased in the pipeline that it has one is called build stage. And one is called deploy stage. Mm -hmm. So, so one of this is called the so one of them is the code build stage where it does is like it basically has this build spec definition which I mentioned that uh, it it needs to create the dist folder and copy the dist folder. Mm -hmm. So what it does is that in this command it will go into the application folder of of my uh, of my artifact and then run the npm install command and then they will then it will run the npm run command so so for then, people that, that don't know this code build the service um, enough is kind of i have a build step that i'm defining here and this build step can contain various different commands that we are executing right exactly yes so if this is more like i would say uh, a step by step command so it's okay. similar to what we have in jenkins as well so in jenkins mm -hmm. you have a jenkins file and here you have the same sort of a flavor using this build spec.yaml file. Okay, so what sorry. it does is like it runs step by step. 
Yeah. And I would I would know it's it's, it's good. And I would potentially then also be able to add unit testing and stuff like that in this build stage. Exactly. So you can you can write uh, build unit stages. You can even write like manual approval. So for example, I can show you in the screen directly. So in this stage, if you can uh, if if you go and edit it, you can even uh, add some action group where you can write like manual approval. So what mm -hmm. it will go is like it, uh, you can use the same SNS or email thread where you can ask the user to basically approve or reject the changes based on that. Okay, cool. Uh, and then based on and then what you what it does is basically uh, it synchronizes the dist folder inside this application and then uh, puts that into the static website web, uh, website page. And and basically it, this is all all of them is driven uh, in the dynamic fashion. So basically you give the static website and the mm -hmm. distribution ID from the template itself. Okay, and that then, means then we, can, we can reuse that then afterwards. Yeah. Exactly, so all the code here is basically driven from the variables. So you give all the email addresses mm -hmm. that you require, you give all the deployment, deployment buckets, you give the repo mm -hmm. repository name. So the advantage of using a Terraform is like, and the variables is like it can propagate across different modules. So whatever name that I give here in let's say the CI/CD demo spa, it can it can go across multi hierarchy modules, and let's say this is the one that we fetch up here. So I don't need to basically hard code anything. Okay, that was something that just catched my attention. There was an IAM role. Um, where and how are we defining the permissions for this this code pipeline that we're executing here? Yeah, that's a very good question, Johannes. Uh, so. Uh, I mean, as we all know that the AWS has this list permissive privilege policies and it's a zero trust, zero trust policies that is required. So what it does is like the, the, we need to ensure that the role that is uh, responsible for building the pipeline or, for example, let's say in this example, uh, the role that is attached to this, it only contains, uh, for example, if I can. Uh, uh, yeah, if you see this service role, mm -hmm. so I need to ensure that this role contains the access to as take actions on S3 bucket that is uh, that hosts the single page application, as well as it basically has the access to uh, the cloud formation for invalidating the uh, cloud form distribution and uploading a new version. Mm -hmm. And that is what that is what we, which we have done here. So we have basically, and as well as the, we need to also ensure that logs are created because we need to ensure that we need to troubleshoot if there is some troubleshooting that happens while deployment failure, we need to ensure that logs are here. So okay, basically- so th That means that, is, so, sorry, uh, that means that as part of your pipeline, you are also defining what the um, services are that this pipeline is going to be able to modify, correct? Exactly, exactly. and. And, and as well as that on, on as part of the roles, we are only mentioning what are the uh, services that it has access to. For mm -hmm. example, it needs to, for the S3 bucket, it needs to only have access to the code pipeline bucket for storing and sharing or exchanging the uh, artifacts across multiple stages and for the static website bucket. Similarly, for the cloud formation, we are asking them to have invalidations only for the distribution that we are building it. Mm -hmm. And and coming back to the pipeline, and now uh, if you see here, so there are another there is another stage. So the first stage of this of this build is building and refreshing the component of the S3 bucket, which is done using this build spec YAML. Mm -hmm. And now now for the second stage is deploying and invalidating the CloudFront distribution, and that is also a more or less uh, pretty similar. And the only command that we do here is just have an API uh, AWS CLI call mm -hmm. where, we, where we add the distribution ID and we just do the invalidation. And that's 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 a whole uh, that's a whole I would say end to end pipeline. And 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 what it does is like whenever we make some changes, you can say it as an impact here. And to start off, uh, or I would say to sh just show a small demo of this. Maybe I can make a small change here. So what I would do here, I'll probably change it to something called trigger pipeline. So what, uh -huh. or, or I or I could say, let's say something showing off the pipeline. 
so what i will do i will just uh, add those changes and i will i will push i will push it to the branch and sync it so what it will do it will it will now push the change into this code commit so if you see here in the repository you can see i just made a com commit here mm -hmm. where where i said like uh, this will be showing off the pipeline so so now you will see the code pipeline will start getting deployed uh, uh, it has already triggered or picked up this change right now so it basically uh, it will it has taken the source from where it is deployed and it will start building and pushing the change in the same time it will also give you notifications here so if i can actually see those yeah so basically here you can you can see that it has started giving you notifications like what is the event type and what are the commit ids and everything cool and if, great and eventually all it would do is like when this whole pipeline starts get building it, it succeeds then it, it will if you, if you start refreshing this you can start uh, you can show off like the new change so it's, it's still now in building but once mm -hmm. this whole whole pipeline gets end you can see the next you can see the new change called showing off the pipeline which is which is just this one cool it, it takes yeah takes like 5 minutes or uh not 5 minutes i would say 3 or 4 minutes mm -hmm. so it's just uploading that takes a little change but the invalidation doesn't take so much so two or three minutes it should be done cool great so uh, with that i think uh, we can um end uh, end this uh, presentation at least and move over to um yeah what do you want to go next so maybe you can stop sharing your screen again a bit rather than i can uh, yeah. switch over to the other view sure. um so um what what would we do different with that pipeline so we have seen a pipeline using built using terraform deploying out a single page application to cloudfront um, what would you add to the stuff that you have shown today if you would have more time or more possibilities uh, well, one of the main things that i would like to add here is as you mentioned the unit tests and then there needs to also be some third party plugins like let's say prisma cloud or some code scanners sonar scan or something which basically ensures or generates a report on top of the code checking that the developers and does has done mm -hmm. and then send those notifications of and or those report links to via slack channel or some ms noting notifications to the other stakeholders as well yep cool thanks that's a that's a good idea um i think um this is really uh, has been really good to see that that kind of pattern is this an open source project Uh, yes, the, uh, there is an open source project, and I have I can actually share the link with you as well. So that would be good. Then I can add them to the video. Uh, that would be really good. I will also link to the blog that you wrote around this, right? Uh, yes. Um, uh, so I I'll probably sh uh, share those in the chat to you. So this yeah, we, is the link. Cool. I will add that to the to the notes then later uh, when we publish this. Um, is there anything else you would like to share or or bring up or Uh, discuss. Uh, uh, just like I would like to share uh, that this is just the minimum viable products that are mentioned here, and there are loads of new additions that needs that can be done on onto this, also on the website side. So you can use Route fifty three, or you can have some domain name attached to this. But uh, this uh, overall, this uh, demonstration and the blog that I have attached is has tried to showcase the capabilities of uh, multiple AWS services like Code Commit, Code Pipeline, and Code uh, Build to empower the DevOps foundation within the software teams. Cool, that's awesome. And um, in one of the next videos that I'm recording, I'm going to uh, look at uh, one of the blueprints that Code Catalyst has. Which uh, allows a similar thing, uh, but not using code pipeline, but using uh, the code catalyst workflows. Uh, so stay tuned for that one as well. And thank you so much for being uh, with me with us today. And uh, looking forward to to see more from you uh, coming uh, hopefully soon. Yeah, it was really nice showcasing the demonstration and the power of uh, DevOps. And thank you again for this for, uh, for this video. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Richard. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.